Okay, so we are back, and after, I gotta admit, a f***ing fun night of fights, yes, I said the F word three seconds into the video because I like to go early. Not what I meant, anyway. And I don't know how you wouldn't, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, I mean this Saturday, Jake Paul Anderson Silva, the fight that pitted Jake Paul against the MMA community once again, and once again, he did what I said he couldn't, he went and beat Anderson Silva. And now that he did beat him, the world is his oyster once again, he has his pick of the litter as to who he wants to fight next, he called out Nate Diaz, and Nate responded in the most Stockton way possible, in the back hallway slapping up Jake Paul's breathing coach. That actually happened. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I want to tell you guys why Jake Paul beat Anderson Silva and not just beat him, but he outboxed him. How? The breakdown, let's go. All right, so how did Jake Paul win this fight? I said coming into this thing, Jake was going to have to stop Anderson because I didn't think he could outbox him. And I'll say it again for the people in the back, I was f***ing wrong. This fight was won with strategy, in my opinion. It wasn't Jake's youth, it wasn't his speed, it wasn't his power. Those things contributed, absolutely, but mainly this was the evolution of Jake in 10 months combined with a great game plan from Jake and his team. On the other side of things, it was kind of what myself and Faye Sensei said on the Breakdown podcast when we talked about our picks for that fight. If Anderson's not popping his jab or throwing combinations and starts a little slower, Jake will have time to get that motor going. So let's start with round one. Jake comes out, pops his jab early. This was clearly the strategy they wanted to go with. Keep Anderson at the end of range until Jake felt comfortable coming in with combinations. Jake wasn't massively accurate with his jab. I think he landed two of 36 in the first round, but that wasn't the point. The point was to keep active in front of Anderson and not let him get going with combinations on the return. Jake was throwing combination punching coming forward while Anderson in that first round was throwing almost nothing. However, I will say Anderson landed one shot. I think it was either a pull or slip left hand and bang down the pipe. I thought from that moment on, oh boy, this is going to be Anderson's fight. But again, credit to Jake, he found a way. So that's an easy round to give Jake. And then we go to round two. And this is where the fight got really close. There are rounds here like two, four, and six that are this close. I'm talking razor thin. So when we go to round two, you have to score this round is what you saw the criteria to be. I thought Anderson won this round because he was able to turn up volume on Jake. And in a close round where both guys landed, Anderson landed by far more power and was on the front foot aggressive coming to Jake, making him work. Even though Jake threw a right hand in this round that if Anderson was actually 50 years old and his speed had just declined like one decisecond smaller, he would have been absolutely laid on the f***ing floor. And round two was a big point for Jake, I thought, because this is the point where Anderson started to get more aggressive and Jake was on the back foot and really just trying to cover up. And he did a good job going back to his strategy of clinching Anderson, trying to avoid the big shots and for the most part doing that. And yes, Jake clinched Anderson, it frustrated him. But you know what? It's a part of boxing. It's a part of the sport. The referee is going to have to separate those exchanges or you're going to have to work your way out, which Anderson did at the end of this round. But you could see here there was a point where Jake could say, okay, I'm a little little bit in over my head here and not be able to recompose himself and things could have got out of hand but he didn't do that we go to round three he's firing off big shots again and yes this was Jake's round I thought he came back great in this round from round two he was able to not only gather himself after Anderson was putting some big shots on him to end the round but he comes out gets right back to the game plan on his jab and it wasn't single stuff it wasn't just jab jab it was jab jab and then a three or four punch combo where Anderson would try to answer with one Jake was throwing three or four we've always talked about that volume paying dividends especially when the other guy's not throwing as much back and you're continuing to lead the fight with that jab after this round Anderson's jab went almost completely out the window it was nowhere to be seen so we head to round four and this one is dead even I mean I it's it's so hard to score this I think they both landed the same amount of shots with Anderson landing more power here what Anderson found in round two he followed up with in this round the uppercuts in the clinch. But the frustration you saw on Anderson's face wasn't just because Jake was clinching him, it was because he wasn't able to implement his game plan. He said so as much after the fight. He didn't have the right game plan. He didn't execute it the way he wanted to. It wasn't just because Anderson was a little older, and yes, he is 47, and it's only his fifth boxing match, but it also was because Jake was doing things like clinching him, like popping his jab in his face, like throwing combinations to stop him from implementing it. Now, because of the fact that Jake threw more volume in round four, and they landed identically in their jab, identically in their power, yes, Anders was more efficient, but Jake was also in control of the distance and range with his jab. His volume made the difference in this round. That's why I went to Jake. This was the point where you could say it was 2-2 or 3-1. I think watching it back the second time, I ended up saying it was 3-1 to Jake at this point because I gave Anderson just the second round 
not the third. So Anderson comes back in round five, and this is his round clearly. This is the one where he dominates. And again, I thought, okay, now we're in the back half of the fight. Is Anderson going to take over here? Is Jake going to start to fade? And Jake, again, while this round did not go his way, Anderson started to actually put combinations together, started switching angles as he came forward. And again, he still wasn't throwing his jab, but he was landing big time power and everything was loaded up. And I couldn't tell if Jake was maybe trying to take a breather in this round because he was on his jab, mostly just trying to work angles, use his footwork and stay out of trouble, which again, his strategy, being able to clinch Anderson when he thought he was in danger and pop his jab, it didn't work for him in this round, but it kept him around to the later points in the fight where he could start to pull away. And it's something, again, I didn't expect was Jake's gas tank to be as good as it was. He was in the best shape he could be in. He prepared for this like it was a world championship fight. So again, you got to take your hat off to him. And we have round six. And again, I'm going to go Anderson in this round just because Anderson threw almost no jabs, right? He didn't land a single jab in this round, but he landed all 12 of his shots as big power shots in the clinch. The uppercuts were working there. Anderson was, at this point, it looked like trying to get Jake out of there, maybe as a foreshadowing to say those next two rounds weren't going to be the best for him, and maybe that's where Anderson's gas tank started to dwindle. He put a lot into this round. He wins this round slightly, very, very slightly, and again, I just think it shows Jake's evolution offensively as well as defensively because his output was still higher in this round than Anderson's was. He just didn't land as much with as much significance, but defensively he was able to stay in there, not get too, too hurt with some of these shots and be around for these last two where we go into round seven. In my opinion, at this point, it's a 3-3 fight and Jake starts to take over. And again, it was the same game plan. Work the jab to set up the big power. Not only getting through, but starting to visually hurt Anderson. The blood was coming down his face already from the early rounds, but this is the start of Anderson actually taking those shots to the body, to the face, and starting to wear them. His eyes starting to swell shut. Jake was more accurate in this round with his power shots than he was in any of the other rounds of the fight, which tells me he definitely has evolved his game to be that accurate to be that active is pretty damn impressive but it was only a precursor because while jake wins that round we go to number eight i think jake's up four three at this point in my opinion anderson had to win this round to even gain a draw but it was also gonna be a close fight to score already so jake had to go out and show out in this round boy did he because finally the one shot that jake lands on everyone landed on anderson i'm talking about the right hand and yes my commentary on the knockdown was flawless. Oh, right hand from Jake puts Anderson down! Oh my god! And funny enough, he had had multiple shots just whiz by Anderson's head, and even some that connected heavy and Anderson took. The one you don't see that puts you down. And I think I deserve a little credit for predicting it would be in the close range, set up with the left hook, and then the right overhand behind it. And for the people, by the way, I, I can't believe I have to address this again. Good God. We are on our sixth Jake Paul fight. I'm still trying to convince people that this thing is not fake or fixed. That was a legitimate knockdown. I understand you guys don't like Jake, but it was legitimate. We have to stop saying this bullshit and nonsense about it being fixed and fake. Every time Jake beats someone, you don't want him to beat. So yes, Anderson does get knocked down. He finished the round strong. Jake still had enough volume wise in the tank, all that to be able to submit that round in the books and still undefeated. Jake wins this. In my book, it was a five rounds to three win plus the 10-8. That would mean 77-74. Yeah, that's it, man. Jake wins this fight. I think it was pretty easy to see why. His game plan was better than Anderson's. He had more volume than Anderson and he was able to follow up with power shots in combination, clinching Anderson when he got a little too over aggressive or got into Jake's space. You don't have to like the clinch in boxing, but it is a mainstay and it's a good strategy for a guy like Jake, who again, we know he's young, he's fast, he has big time power, but he's still raw, right? He's still green. In other words, he's still learning. So where the skills may not be Canelo-esque, even though he called him out in the ring after, his ring IQ and his ability to work with what he has is some of the highest I've seen for a guy at his level. So congrats to Jake, man. I, I don't know what else to say. But at this point, I, I'm convinced that Jake has been put on this earth to win fights. I say he won't. But that's just a testament to his ability, his team, his coach, BJ Flores, Danny Smith, J. Leon Love, all those guys putting in the work, the time, and the effort. You got to respect it. And that's where we leave it. Let me know what you guys think down below, unless you're going to start saying stuff about it being fake or rigged or fixed. If that's the case, go back to playing Fortnite and cranking 90s, because that'll be the only right angle you guys could take on this fight. But he's coming off a massive win against a legendary opponent. How does he top that? Maybe taking a journey to Northern California and fighting Nate Diaz in his backyard. Yes, please. That fight would be
fucking fun. But we're living in Jake's world, and I don't really have the answers ever. So, whatever he decides, I guess we'll find out. Okay.